Good to see you again, fellas. We were out with the cold last week. Sorry we weren't able to do an episode, but I was pretty much passed out on that couch behind us. But we're feeling good and ready to clean another record. Today, we're going to feature a review of a record cleaning fluid that I've never used before. It's called TurgiClean. And I think as you'll see, the recommended process for using this product is at best weird and bizarre. And... Um, in some cases, cringeworthy. But we'll get to that in a moment. First, we had to pick a record to clean, and we always love to turn you on to something new, if possible. This is live at the Knitting Factory. In fact, we have both Volume 1 and Volume 2. We're just going to go ahead and start with Volume 1. But this represents some wonderful music from a very specific era. That is the first year, maybe two, of the music, the musicians that performed at the Knitting Factory. So this would have been probably 1987, 1988, maybe into 1989. And it's really an influential, wonderful music space. You could call it uh, jazz, but really I think of it more as an eclectic uh, space for musicians to perform. It opened, as I said, in 87 on Houston Street, uh, very near to CBGB's. I used to go to that club when I worked in New York, uh, but at that point it had moved to Leonard Street, I want to say 74 Lever uh, Leonard Street. Used to see John Zorn perform there quite a bit. But these performances are just wonderful. We're talking about musicians like Mark Rabot, the guitarist and longtime collaborator uh, with Tom Waits, uh, Nels Klein, another great guitarist, Mark Feldman, wonderful violinist. Uh, we have Ikue More. If you don't know her, she, she actually plays a laptop computer in real time, which is kind of interesting. And she went on to form the band Mephista with the absolutely glorious drummer Susie Ibarra. Really a big fan of hers. But back to these records, we also have Fred Frith, the guitarist, the guitarist Sonny Chirac, the wonderful drummer, I'm going to butcher the name, but here we go, Farouan Akloff. I think that's the way he pronounces his name. And Joey Barron, the drummer, appears uh, on one of the tunes on this record as well. Uh, he's a longtime collaborator with Bill Frizzell. This particular record is not on the Knitting, um, the knitting Factory record label. There, that does exist. This came out before they launched the record label. It's on a &M. The catalog number is 5242. So let's take a closer look comes with some uh, literature about the history of the uh, knitting factory. We will replace this nasty paper sleeve. Looking at it closely, it's a pretty dirty record. I don't believe this one has ever been cleaned. We'll show you a close-up of the dirt in the groove, what's in the run-out groove, so on and so forth. Let's get to it. Let's clean this record. Okay, before we get into cleaning our record with TurgiClean, let's talk about what it is. That is actually a problem. I'm not sure what it is. There are no ingredients listed. It most certainly starts with Turgitol, which is a brand name for a line of surfactants from Dow Chemical. Surfactants are basically chemicals that reduce the surface tension of liquids and allow, in our case, water to get deeper into small spaces like the groove of a record. Most record cleaning fluids have some sort of surfactant. Uh, alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol is a surfactant, but this is just a surfactant. If it starts with Turgitol, it includes something else, and I'm not sure exactly what. Based on the research I've done, it may be ethylene oxide, that is frankly nasty stuff. You do not want to get that inside your body. So I would say if you're using a pure manual approach where you're going to get your hands wet with this liquid, you might want to consider rubber gloves. Also, if you look at the PVC compatibility chart, that particular chemical is not good, no bueno for vinyl. 
Of course, the same is true for isopropyl alcohol, but when used in small enough quantities, it's perfectly fine. So we're going to hope that that is the, the case here with TurgiClean. As far as the cleaning methods are concerned, I mentioned earlier that they are a bit bizarre. Normally, we will follow the manufacturer's instructions for our first go around in reviewing the new record cleaning fluid, but they, all three methods that they recommend, a pure manual method, a spin clean like approach, and one that utilizes an ultrasonic machine, all include soaking the label through and through. Now it's true, getting the label wet isn't going to damage it, but it certainly involves a lot of drying time and it's just so cringeworthy to see a record dunked into water. I don't think I can bring myself to do it. So we're gonna utilize a suction type machine and the cleaning fluid in, in that manner. Before I go on though, you may have seen some of our videos recently where we reviewed the Kermis restoration process. And a lot of you rightly noted, that's a long time. That takes quite a bit of time to clean and restore a record. And it's true, it does. However, we do think that's a wonderful process and worthy of your most treasured recordings. But get this, if you were to follow TurgiClean's recommended approach for the best result, you're gonna first dunk it into a spin clean. This is the manual type uh, tub where you put it in and just move it back and forth. That's a pre-clean step. So let's say that takes 10 minutes or so. Then you're gonna use an open lid ultrasonic machine. You can't have one that has a lid on it, and I'll get to that in a moment. But the recommendation there is to run that ultrasonic machine for 30 minutes. They don't want you just to degas with a normal degassing process that is maybe a minute and 30 seconds, but to actually run the thing for 30 minutes. Then, once you put the record on and put it into a TurgiClean bath, they recommend a 40-minute ultrasonic cycle. You couldn't do that with something like the Kermis machine. It's got a lid on it. It would overheat. The KL Audio, not intended to have any sort of chemical in its bath at all. So you would need more of an industrial-type open uh, ultrasonic machine. It goes on from there. So once it's gone through the, a 40-minute ultrasonic cycle, they recommend taking it out and putting it over a bathtub or a utility tub and spraying it down the entire record, this whole surface, label and all, with distilled water. They recommend using some uh, kind of lawn and garden pump where you can put some pressure into a, into a container and spray that distilled water on it. Once you've done that, you're going to have to let that label dry. That's going to take several hours. So you're looking at a multi-hour process just to clean a single record. That's a bit crazy. We don't have the uh, ultrasonic machine that has an open top. It would also take a, a, a mechanism to turn the record in the bath. Uh, there's one made from a company called Vinyl Stack, perfectly legitimate. But 40 minutes seems like a whole heck of a lot to me. So we're gonna stick with their recommended approach, Turgic Clean's recommended approach with a suction type machine, in our case, the VPI Cyclone. So in order to accomplish that, we'll start as we always do with the Giotto Blaster. We have our Turgic Clean mixed up here. Note that this is a very highly concentrated product. It's recommended to use between 10 and 20 drops per gallon of water. We have uh, 32 ounces here and have utilized four drops of the product. So right in the meaty middle of their recommendation. It is also recommended that you follow up with two pure water rinses, and I would agree with that. This kind of chemical is not easy to get off of the record surface, so we'll do it twice with pure water. We have some additional pure water to clean our brushes in between steps, and we have separate wands and collins, for the, one for the TurgiClean and one for the pure water rinse our brush to keep things nice and tidy. And for this purpose, we're gonna go with something that is very similar to what TurgiClean recommends. These are the um, Prelude from Scott Walker brushes. The nature of these brushes are akin to what TurgiClean recommends, which is a paintbrush, not like a traditional paint paintbrush, but the padded ones, the rectangular shaped ones that fit onto plastic containers they often use to paint up along the edge of a wall. This has a similar kind of approach to that, so we're going to stick with the walker brushes. All right, I think we have everything ready to go. Let's get to it. Let's clean this record.
by the way, we're utilizing the disc doctor pads, if you will, or velvet lips on either side of the slit. Okay, now we're going to do the pure water rinse. Actually, we're going to do it twice. Uh, before I do, however, you might have noticed how evenly and thoroughly the Turgiclean spread across the top of the vinyl. That's the surfactant. When you see that nice even spread, you know that there's a lot of surfactant. This is all surfactant. There were no scrubby bubbles to deal with. So uh, that's just the nature of this, of this product. Let's get to the pure water rinse. Time for side two. Before we flip it over, let's clean off anything that might have gone onto our cork surface.
Okay, that is the process, the recommended process for utilizing the suction type machine with Turgiclean. We'll go give this a listen, tell you what we think. We'll discard this one, the new aftermarket dinner. Ready to go. Okay, fellas, final thoughts and for the record, let's talk about the music. I am highly recommending this record and volume two. Live at the Knitting Factory, it's just wonderful stuff. Is, it, uh, is every recording or every track, I should say, off the charts great? No, there are a few that I would say sound dated today, as though that sort of 80s, new agey influence was creeping in. I'm not a big fan of that myself. But most of these uh, tracks are absolutely fantastic, and some of the best names and jazz, eclectic, experimental music of the day performed there. And another reason you might want to check this out is the quality of the recordings themselves. They, whether you like the tune or not, they are consistently very high quality recordings and capture the real essence of the live performance. They did a fantastic job in that regard. This is a reference quality recording for your hi-fi system. As far as the TurgiClean process, you may have sensed at the beginning I was a little bit skeptical. One, it was just a surfactant not going to produce any sudsing kind of effect, and that concerned me a little bit, but also not knowing what's in the product itself. But I tell you what, it did a heck of a good job. When we listened to this, there were no pops and clicks, very, very clean, dead silent background. So kudos to the folks at uh, Turgia Clean for getting it right. Will I utilize this exclusively going forward? Absolutely not, but we often like to utilize different products, different brushes, different cleaning fluids, uh, depending on the nature of the dirt uh, in the, on the record. I can see using TurgiClean as a pre-clean in particular. I'm looking forward to doing that. When I get a very, very dirty record, I often like to put it through a soaking in a spin type, uh, spin clean type machine and to utilize the TurgiClean in the spin clean, I think would be in a very effective process as a pre-clean before going on to whatever process makes best sense for that particular record. So I think we will be utilizing uh, TurgiClean in the future. See you at the next record, guys. <laughs>